today's episode of the Silly Goose Gang podcast is brought to you by our friend Wakar Rashid from Titan Sports over in Pakistan. He is the manufacturer of this uh, wonderful William Wallace rash guard that he made for us. Um, and you know, if you want to go check him out to get some stuff made, you can get him at thetitansports.com and on Instagram at Titan Sportswear. Uh, so definitely go check him out uh, if you want some stuff manufactured. Silly Goose Gang Podcast. Let's do it. Well, basically, plans, eh? Let's do it. Let's do a solo one. Let's, uh, Cheers, sir. This comes up here all the time and it says, uh, this meeting has been recorded. I know that. I know it's been recorded. I know, and it works. It has been recorded and we are now officially on the podcast and so we're just running. So basically, plans episode didn't quite go, but we'll get it sorted. But we thought, we talked so much rubbish. There's loads of times we've sat and said, man, we should have recorded that last half hour. So So this time, we're doing it. So are we calling this episode 70? This is officially 71. 70 was a Matt Bold roll. Oh, yeah. I forget. When we speak to these famous people, it's... uh... (laughs) So, but yeah, this would be officially 71. So Mike McCastle, the crazy bastard that he is, uh, message to say his wife was in labor, so yeah, obviously that's more important. So he went away, um, and then uh, yeah, Ali Ali went for a, a nature break. And uh, so, the first question I've got to ask for you is, um, in the pooling household, what is the jobby wheel? The jobby wheel <laughs> from the American, uh, from the American. Uh, <laughs> I insurance heard, company. Did you hear I, on your shout? I, I heard everything. I heard everything. Brilliant, eh? <laughs> Brilliant, eh? Yeah, and you, it was there's an American like job market website. I basically S1 jobs, uh-huh. but it's called Jobby. And they had a prize given over Thanksgiving or the week before Thanksgiving. <laughs> but it was like, spin the jobby wheel and win a million dollars. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's what we're saying. That's when you know that a company has absolutely zero Scots in the business. Or they have one Scot who just goes, I'm not going to tell the bastards. Let's get that out there because that'll be hilarious. Yeah. All I have so that's now became a joke of if you go to the toilet, you have to say, I'm going to... Sp- I'm, I'm sitting here going, what did she just... Did she just... <laughs> She did say jobby wheel. <laughs> she did say the jobby wheel. So yes, that was awesome. indeed a jobby wheel break that I needed. And it was very, very much needed. It was a proper ship break ship. The three, Comporting it. The three people who are listening have now uh, either, either gotten way more into us or left us. <laughs> One of the two. We don't care at this point. We do the not cider care. cider is amazing. Genuinely. If you like cider... There's a little shop in Anstruther. Uh, it is phenomenal. They have the best ciders. <sighs> nice. If you like ciders. Nice. So, um, well, yeah. we're both having a cheeky cider tonight, so why not? Eh? Cheers, sir. It's my birthday on Thursday, so this could be the, my birthday episode. It is indeed. Chris's early birthday episode. Now you're turning... What are you turn 37? 37. Woo! 37. Remember it well. Comes at you quick, man. Comes at you it quick. Does, eh? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-seven. Just stop and go. Remember when you remember when you were seventeen and thought thirty-seven was like so old dead. and like yeah, they dead. had it all all their all their shit together or just completely old and past it. One of the two of them. Yeah, I still I still regularly wake up in the middle of the night. And go, <gasps> what the fuck is a fixed rate mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Quite regularly. Yeah. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like, I know people see this all the time, but. There's, there is no adults. No. Like three. Maybe three really serious people. There's definitely there's definitely a lower number than you thought there was when you I, I, when you were a kid. I remember um when we were like seventeen and one of my pals had a, a girlfriend who was like two years older. She was like nineteen. I remember being at a party and she was talking to us about mortgages eh, not mortgages, eh, pensions. It was just like <laughs> Listen, I'm going to drink this white lightning and 
get rejected by girls. <laughs> That's what my plan is. <laughs> my plan is for the night. I don't want to talk about pensions. The fuck. That's hilarious. See, a, story, a very similar story to, as you know, I train people for financial services. And I had run a session, which used to be my favourite session because I'm sad and I'm geeky like this, but my favourite session used to be all about Visa, as in the company and how their processes all work. Mm. And one of the young guys that was in training who was like 21, 22 years old, this was on the Thursday I did the training. The following Monday, he came back into training because it was like a two-week course. He's like, Ali, I was in a gaff at the weekend, three in the morning, talking to folk in the kitchen all about the visa rules because it was so interesting. Everyone was pure stoned and steaming <laughs> and high listening to me talk about visa and the reservation cycle. Oh, man. The weird yeah. shit you talk about in a gaff, eh? At uh, three o'clock in the morning, thinking... Mm-hmm. I remember drinking absinthe once. Uh, my pal Willie had uh, he brought some black absinthe back from Spain, and I don't, you drunk you drunk green absinthe. Uh, yes, I've had green. The shit that Picasso cut his ear off with. Black absinthe is way Van Gogh, but we'll continue with Picasso. Van Gogh, Picasso. He drew points. Um, it wasn't as good as Bob Ross, is what I'm saying. Um, no, it wasn't Bob Ross or Tony Hart. Bob Ross. It wasn't, no, it wasn't Tony Hart. It was not Tony Hart. <laughs> it was not, what was the guy on uh, Art Attack? Uh, Neil Neil Buchanan. <laughs> Neil Buchanan. He was not, he was doing Neil Buchanan. Um, <laughs> uh, we uh, we had the black stuff and um, or uh, um, yeah, it was like a like an aniseed flavor, and it would get you from stone cold sober to paralytic shit faced and two shots it was ridiculous and I, 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 like, I, I had some vodka and probably two shots and I woke up in the morning and I had, I had been trying to write songs it's when I was trying to learn to play guitar and I was trying to write songs you know you wake up in the morning it's like home and you look at you holy shit what the fuck nobody ever needs to see this this is awful like nothing made sense just just fucking the inner workings of a fucking retard. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. That's a bad <laughs> one. Um, I know. You can say it was about yourself, eh? Um, it was just nonsense, absolute nonsense. So, don't don't, don't drink black absinthe. Um, <sighs> green was, absinthe's bad enough. Yeah, I've had green absinthe. Black stuff is fucking aw- like aw- awful, awful. Mm. The smell of it, you. Oh. Um, no. I remember my, my, oh, my, when my old man was in the Navy, he brought back from Ireland and, and Lucasade bottles, bottles of Poutine, mm. which was basically home distilled spirit. Oh, Jesus. So moonshine. And uh, basically moonshine, but it was Irish moonshine, Irish so it was called moon. Poutine. And uh, one of the guys on the boat drank half a bottle of like the old fa- remember the old fashioned looks that you used to get the cellophane on when you were out the orange bottles yeah, yeah, yeah. actually it was one of those type ones eh? and one of the boys drank half a bottle of it and went blind permanently Fuck. deep like full demobbed out the navy blind as and couldn't see a fucking thing where like basically because they reckon it was spiked to like antifreeze and all kinds of stuff eh, to bump the alcohol content up just yeah. horrific eh? and my, my dad knew like proper professional alcoholics as you've yeah. came the story i've told you about mad dog and his electric soup which was half a pint of brandy and half a pint of bleach i know uh one of my one of my one of my best pals craig was a uh raf guy and some of the drinking that they guys did fucking like jesus oh. it was just a drinking club where they did some war <laughs> yeah <laughs> they went, they I went see the... between drinking oh all right the raf the navy was well, my my dad when he was in the navy? They were heading down with the task force to the Falklands in eighty two, because mm. he was a he was on a mine hunter at the time, and uh, British intelligence got word that when the task force was down at the, at the Falklands, Spain were going to retake Jib, and All my right. dad got basically as they headed down through the Bay of Biscay and kind of broke through like the the top end of it. They were told you're not going to Falklands, you're going to patrol Jib to stop the Spaniards coming across because as long as there's one boat there, the Spaniards will not try it. So literally, as everyone went down in the South Atlantic, minus 10 degrees, getting shot by the RJs, my dad was drinking tenants and having barbecue in the beach every night. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the Spanish trying to take back anything. What are they going to yeah. do? Throw fucking yeah, paella at them. Throw paella well, That's the thing. You've got... Yeah. that's And that's all it took was one Navy boat that had like 32 sailors on board. No weapons, because it was a mine sweeper. It had no weapons. 
Yeah. It was all designed to find other mines, but it was the fact it was just the presence. The entire Spanish armor went, oh, no, 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 no. Or Navy, <laughs> sorry, went, no, no, no. Chris Waddle. Manana, manana. Manana, manana. Chris Waddle. And just went absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere in your job. Just Julio Giordio for a ship. Ella Interior, Scorchio. Ah, uh, man, that's fucking a pearl hole. Nineties reference. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Indeed, yeah, indeed. Oh. Mm. But all powerful drinkers and kind of drink. Cannot drink. I tell you, cannot drink. Sip compared to what I used to. <sighs> he used to do some legend. It's quite funny because I was talking to I was talking to my pal this other day, and he was saying he was talking to some guy in the pub, and he was talking about it. like he had drunk a, a liter and a half of Grey Goose last weekend, and it's just like. No, you didn't. You would die if you drank a liter and a half of Grey Goose. And we were saying we would regularly drink a bottle of vodka between three of us before we went out and then started drinking, probably. So we were probably drinking maybe three quarters of a bottle of vodka a night between uh, each, you know, the time you count up what you mm. had and how, what you were yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And that was me at my... Oh, I was going to say my physical best, my uh, alcoholic best. The people saying they're drinking a litre and a half of vodka. Fuck off, you die. You can't die, do it, I, you just can't do it. Last time I was, oh man, we were in the Perth, we were in the loft and uh, we ran into two, two of our buddies and they were sitting with a bottle of Grey Goose at the table. So we got a bottle of Grey Goose to go with it. So we had, we'd been drinking. I was probably already well on the road and uh, we set in about a bottle of Grey Goose. Man, we destroyed a bottle of Grey Goose. The next day I was in my flat and I was lying in front of the radio, the heating up fuel, genuinely going, I'm going to have to fucking phone an ambulance. This is maybe five years ago. I'm going to have to phone an ambulance. Like, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm going to die. Like that bad, curled up, sh- yeah. like <clears throat> rattling, <laughs> rattling like a junkie. Oh my God. That's a fucking bottle, a, a, a half a bottle. <sighs> Could not, couldn't do it anymore. No, I couldn't. I couldn't go with it. We have the my mate Trig used to be. He pretty still is a big drinker, not as much again as he used to be because his age is well. Well, his age is with me. He's forty three, forty four. But me, him, and my mate Malloy all went out to Falaraki back when we were nineteen twenty. It's when we ended up staying out for a wee while. Eh? But Trig, one night we like you do when you're on holiday and you're abroad. You drink for like thirty six hours yeah. straight. Yeah. And we all played. We all played American football together. And Malloy had disappeared. We had lost him at some point over the over the intervening period. And me and Trigg were walking back to our hotel room. And Trigg went down into like a three-point stance with American football. Went, come on, Ali, race. Trevor, Trevor, ha, ha. And just started running. And the next thing I was looking for the sniper because he went just fucking down, face planted, full out on the road. No stumble, no nothing. Just literally yeah. sprinting full, flat in his pass. Mm. Carried him up the hill to the to the hotel room and the next morning he wasn't in his bed and Malloy had reappeared and I was there and we were like where's Trig and we could hear the shower was on but it was just one of the crappy like gravity showers it wasn't a power shower it was just because the tank was higher than the hose so it kind of fell through and we opened the the bathroom door and Trig was literally laid in a comatose position with a shower head just behind his ear just laid there just like shivering and shaking and just puking up blood just constantly yeah so we just shut the door and left up me eh, for like 18 hours man but I, as you say i can't do that anymore i've not been no, able to do that for no. decades now eh? we, we were the same in uh, magaluf 2007 eight something like that fuck man you think about it, like genuinely on it from like i mean sitting having pints during the day at the pool and then having Aye. your dinner Having a wee siesta, maybe seven o'clock or nine o'clock up on the balcony, and about the vodka with the tunes on, out all night into BCM, home pizza, wake up nine ten o'clock in the morning, and used to go to the uh, there was a bronze bar, it was a Scottish bar, and there was just Scottish football tops that were all signed in pictures, and I think the guy was in the van, and it was just like waking up in the morning going, right boys, what you's wanting? <sighs> Here we are. My Scottish breakfast and a pint of Terence. I'd sit there in the morning, my how? Just drink it, drink it. You're just chugging the first one down. Like, right. I think I'm all right now. Like, I right, give me another one. Give me another one of those. I'm just sitting in a fry up every day for seven days. You think, honestly, that would fucking kill you. Your body's made it. And mad. then there we were. 
Oh, it was 100. percent And then, like I you say, we were talking this. <laughs> we were talking this morning. Eh? It's like now it gets to go out at ten o'clock. Are you fucking mental? <laughs> I've been sat on the couch. I've been sat on the couch now, and the fucking audacity of somebody messaging me at like seven o'clock saying, you "Fancy a couple of pints tonight?" You want? Wait. You want me to put jeans on and do my hair? <laughs> like no. The fire's on. I'm comfortable. <laughs> it's not going to work. Happening, eh? No, it's not going to work for me. Um, no. Yeah, man. Fucking ages of bastard. Funny how all the things your your mum oh, and dad told you when you were uh, when you were younger all come true. <laughs> That's just true. Because I'm seeing oh, the next generation starting. Like say that big storm and Logan was out boozing, street drinking, street and drinking. a red weather warning. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just on a t-shirt on, cutting about the streets. Aye. I had, his, I had his hoodie on and his baseball cap. Oh, man. And then just tan and doing bottles of Dragon Fruit 2020. Some of the shit, man, we used to go up to. Like, I mean, I mean, getting out, we we'll went to Perth one night, and uh, Willie used to take his uh, grand's Peugeot 306. And uh, what, what uh, uh, a pal was, Lee Graham. And it was, je- that, this is the guy I've told you about who used to, it was ridiculous. Completely and utterly ridiculous. I think he took a lot too many drugs. <laughs> and uh, I was just driving on the motorway up to Perth and he would be doing 70 miles an hour and he would jump out, he would open the door, hand on the door, hand around the headrest and go out and just like drag his feet along the ground, like street surfing. <laughs> like 70 miles an hour. You're thinking, imagine now, like, he used to get out and fucking swap, like driving driver and passenger, uh-huh. getting out across the car. On the motorway, thinking, imagine now if you found out Logan or Aaron was doing that. <laughs> oh, I know. What the fuck are you doing? Idiots. Absolute idiots. It was amazing that we didn't die. Amazing. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I've, I've said that loads of times when I, when I when I talked to my mates that we used to hang about with and used to go surfing with. And it was like, how? Like, me and Stu, me and Stu were steaming down in like Cornwall neck of the woods. Um, and we fell off a cliff into the sea at three in the morning in the dark because Stu had leant over to spit because he'd been puking and he oh. leant over to spit and all over and I saw him over balance so I reached and grabbed like what I could to the back of his jumper and it but his weight kept going and it pulled me off and the two of us went over the cliff and all we heard above was everyone screaming as we disappeared into the void <laughs> didn't care if the tide was in or not or anything and we hit the water like a sack of tatties and then had to basically climb back up the cliff to get back up to the top. Fuck's sake. And then we did it again once we got to the top. <laughs> then it became a laugh. Whee. Well, like, should we do that? We're well, like, that was fucking insane. Should we do it again? Aye, okay, then let's do it. Whee. Shit. The shit you used to get up to as kids. I'm glad. Uh, we, we've often said this with like, my pals, boys from Kinross, Like, I'm so glad there was no mobile phones. Because we would have been in so much and so much trouble. So oh, like no social media, no social media. None of that shit was ever uploaded to anything. Mm, there is a very early video of it. Must have been when Jackass was just come out because of and the video <laughs> quality is horrific. And they fucking scalped me across the head when I ironed board because that was funny. And, <laughs> But the video is like so I still laugh at now. It's still oh, it's hilarious. It's like me falling out the tree. But um, yeah, that's 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 hilarious. But um, yeah, but I'm glad none of that shit's on. Really, been we would have been arrested so many times if we were kids now. Oh, hundred percent. I'm the same. I think that there used to be a couple of old VHSC videos of stuff that people would take a, ca- a video uh, camera to a party uh, and record a wee bit. But yeah. nothing like you'd have nowadays. Ooh. Logan actually asked me today, he was like, oh, I saw that video of Chris Fawn at the tree. Did he plan that? I was like, no, no, he's just a fucking idiot. Yeah. No, he's an idiot. <laughs> that, the funny thing about that is, and I didn't tell Johnny at the time because he would have murdered me, is I had broken ribs, didn't get my blue belt because I couldn't compete. and I was going to compete, get my blue belt. And so I couldn't do that. And then we had planned out to do something. They felt, you know, weeks went by, felt all right, went down, did some, did some squat and some deadlift and went, Aye, I feel all right. Right, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to go for a run. Better to lock leave in. Right, let me go for a run. And then just seeing a tree. <laughs> so I went, I can climb that. I'm going to film it. <laughs> it just jumped into the oh, and fell right on the side of the ribs that had broken. And it instantly went, oh, 
oh no and I had to again, hobble back to the car and kind of going <sighs> 34 <laughs> at the time I was like, oh, my I I plumb I like what? why was I going to climb a tree why did I film myself climbing a tree why am I running I don't I fucking just had broken ribs so that set me back a good month <laughs> the thing is you think like that the way because I went it must have been a couple of Easter's ago. I'd gone out for a walk with Anya and Aaron, and neither yeah. of them had really climbed much trees because kids these days didn't seem to climb trees as much as we did. We were like up and doing trees like nobody's oh, business uh, when I was a baby. Yeah. And I had said, Oh, there's a couple of good climbing trees because they were like kind of Y shape and a good bit to grab yeah. onto. And Anya was like, It looks awful dangerous though. And I'm like, That's what makes it fun. That's the good like, bit. let's do it. And I was like, Look, I'll show you how easy it is. And got like climbed up, climbed up, climbed up, and then went. Shit, I don't know if I can get back down now. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from by gravity, eh? Yeah. Ah, oh, man. It's funny because you don't... Never considered any danger. No danger no. at all when you're younger. None. No. None Just fucking all. do stupid shit. Mm -hmm. I remember me and my mate, David, D David Ryber, who might be listening to a shout out to you if you are, Dave, because I know you listen to some of the episodes. We got heavily into free diving when I was surfing. Mm -hmm. And we genuinely went out into the fourth with homemade weight belts to try and give ourselves negative buoyancy. We had no idea of what weight we actually were to make a negative buoyancy weight. We literally had like a leather like workies belt and we mm -hmm. just tied on half kilo weights hoping we'd worked it out right. <laughs> and the only way we knew for certain was we jumped into the water and went, oh, we're going down, it's working. <laughs> okay, now. How, how do we get back up though? We had to take the belts off and swim up and leave them because they were too heavy to swim with. For fuck's sake, man. You can drown yourself for a laugh. <laughs> ah, exactly. <laughs> but we'd been watching freediving videos and we'd always struggle to get deep enough down to make it, like, decent. Yeah. And it was like, it's because we're too positively buoyant with the air. We need to get weight belts. And obviously, we couldn't afford proper diving weight belts and mm. to do it all properly. So we literally just gaffer taped half kilo weights onto a leather workies belt and then jumped into the sea. Like, oh, you know, at Burnt Island, where there's the, yeah. you go up over the top and there's the wee uh, old lighthouse bit, and then there's like that cove. Mm -hmm. We were jumping off the cliffs into that when it was high tide with these belts on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, crazy bastards. Yeah, the shit you did, man. The shit you did. Aye, I know. I know. Yeah. But as you say, if that was a kid, my kids nowadays, I'd be like, that's dangerous. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't come crying. Don't be silly. Don't, Don't come be silly. Die. Yeah. Fucking morons. Exactly. But a good laugh at the time, eh? We were. Good oh, laugh exactly. Time. Exactly. So, um, I was going to say there, do we have anything else booked in for the podcast? No, at the moment, no. But we can get some episodes. We've got a couple we can catch back up on. Yeah, Ben. And then, yeah, ben we've got Ben. Get Mike back on. Yep. Whatever, happened, whatever happened to the because we were talking about it off camera before the um, what did that person do for like um, historic Scotland? Maybe they did something on one of the islands. Oh, ages and ages ago. Yeah, they were the lead archaeologist up at the Ring of Broadcast. Yeah, that was it. And remember, they said get back in touch when the season finished, and then we got yeah. people like Clint Emerson and <laughs> Jason Gardner and stuff like that oh, coming on, and they kind of oh, kind of slipped to the back feels. burner. Yeah, that'd be cool. Aye, that could be a, a definite back burner episode. Eh? There's there's loads of ones that I've got stored in a file on my phone. I want like, to see oh, this Sunday about UFOs. What about John's pal that we were talking about this morning at the gym? No, no, no it doesn't. <laughs> that's uh, that's what was Mark's. What's I can't remember what Mark's last name was, but he was. I remember, I remember him when he tells that story now. It looks funnier the further back you go. Like he wanted to grapple. He wanted people to grapple with. <laughs> so, so, so he's a gumpy looking for men to grapple, and he just had loads of um. <laughs> Liberace types. <laughs> I'll, I'll grapple with you, mate. I, what do we need yeah. to wear? <laughs> totally. I'll bring How my much you bench? How much you weigh? <laughs> I think I could pick you up. I, I, I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> you had loads of uh, men with questionable morals messages about grappling. Oh, um, I yeah, don't doubt for a second. But then he, what, what was the story? Like he went out looking for UFOs in the the police turned up thinking the that police they turned up because he was at a dog in sight. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know what's more than, what's more embarrassing at that point. More embarrassing. Me up. So, can we have a word here, sir? Oh, oh, honestly, I was there. I was looking for the what? can the UFOs in that. <laughs> what, eh? ha- what happened? If the fucking police started to listen, we've had reports of some crackpots looking for UFOs. Oh, honestly, no, no, I'm just, I'm just shagging this boy's wife in front of him. Honestly. <laughs> just talking, honestly. Fucking UFOs, fucking UFOs. Oh, you weirdos. You weirdos. Uh, uh, oh, talking. <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to speak to somebody about UFOs, but not Mark. He's uh, no. He's uh, a bit of a silly goose. Um, and we need to try and get some done for UFOs. That'd be interesting. Definitely. Um, well, yeah, there's some people that I'd like to speak to. Um, and make that shit happen. I'd like to get I'd like to get some more history people on because I'm a history nerd. So about that because we're both history nerds. We're talking about that off camera, eh? about yeah, how much we're both geeking the history nerds. Yeah. I would love to get uh, Dan Jones on. Don't know who that is. He's a historian. He's written some. I've got a couple of his books there. I've just got a new one at Christmas that's going away to Santa. Yeah, um, yeah I'd like to get him on. I think he'd be super interesting. Mm. But yeah, I would I would like to get other if history people are listening to us. I know, I know, we're big in the history world. Um, <laughs> so, if you are a world famous uh, historian, uh, and you're listening to the Silly Goose Gang, <laughs> check us out at Silly Goose Gang Podcast on Instagram. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. There's a few, like somebody about UFOs and astronaut would be cool, but you've 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 messaged NASA and never had much success. So, um, I haven't. I messaged. I think I've messaged three astronauts, and every single time the PR agent's going, no, no, it's not going to work. Um, it's not going to work for us yeah. thanks but no thanks do you know who's been on our podcast and still can't tell our voices apart even though she listens to us quite regularly Megan Megan and Dougals and Zed yes if you're listening Megan this is Ali hi hi Hi. yeah she messages every so often she's like I'll listen to your podcast she, I still can't work out who you are she is a fucking sweetheart of a girl she is. And her TikToks are tremendous. <laughs> the little reel she puts up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's a fucking sweetheart. Sweetheart of a girl. Um, yeah, Canadians yeah. are super nice. They are, eh? Yeah. Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are. yeah. We need to get, get some scientists. We need to get, get some, some historians. Sci- uh, we need to get a podcast studio set up somehow. Uh, I'm not entirely okay, sure sorry. It. But yeah, so if somebody's listening to this and having a they have a podcast studio, they would like to give to us. Um yeah. we'd be we'd be happy to take that off you. Totally. Give us a shout. Give us a shout and we can work it out. As if somebody but yeah, I think we'll it. go next year we'll get some cool episodes in. I've got a few people that I've got sat in the back burner that I'm gonna message early next year. Try and set up a guest list. We are hundred percent getting Marcus back on. I think Marcus awesome. is going to kick off 2022 with Marcus. Marcus Ferguson, um, bad motherfucker that he is. <laughs> he is a bad motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And if you're a, if you're a local paedophile, I've got news for you, it's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, Marcus will hunt you down and burn you, and then put you, you out, and then burn you, and then put you out, burn you, and I'm eventually. Bad, so <laughs> it's coming to fuck you up. Um, yeah. So if you are a, yeah. if you are a local paedophile, don't listen to that episode. Or, or in fact, yeah. any of our episodes, because we I'm don't really want hope. a local paedophile audience. <laughs> I really hope that we don't have any paedophiles listening. <laughs> if you're a paedophile, you listen to us. Fuck you. We fuck hate you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Marcus would be cool. I'd love to get Clint back on, but he's becoming so much in demand. He did say to me that um, we would do it again, but uh, he's in demand. So what can you do? He has indeed. We, we, do. we need to get Jason back on for a third episode, I think. Oh, our pal Jason, the great get Jason. Jason on. On. We're uh, going to get, I think, at some point towards the end of next year, once the show's been out on Amazon Prime with Chris Pratt, I think we should get Jack Carr back on. Our course. good friend Jack Carr. If Jack, Jack's willing to do it, we'll, we'll have him. Uh, 100%. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a few episodes I'd like to drop Weird back in shit. on. The weirdest shit in the world is having Jack Carr having just been on Joe Rogan and then messaging Jack to say, I just listened to the podcast, man. It was really, really good. Well, you know, congratulations and it's uh, awesome to see you again. Somebody, and he's messaging back saying, oh, cheers, man. Thanks very much. <laughs> what the fuck? Life's like I know. He's, he's another one, though, like like Megan. He is an absolute sweetheart of a human an being, absolute though. Absolute sweetheart of a man. I mean, he would, he would shoot you, but an absolute yeah. sweetheart of a man. Um yeah, yeah. Again, Jason Gardner. Jason Gardner, shout out to Command Master Chief. He is an absolute sweetheart of a human being. 
But again, he's a badass motherfucker. <laughs> I would love to have went on drinking with Jason Gardner 20 years ago. Oh, I think we'd have died, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or, been, or almost certainly been arrested. But yeah, that would have been, yeah. that would have been, that would have been fun. All in our primes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Drinking with Jason. Rolling. But yeah, that would have been fun. definitely a few eps. I think as well, we might need to get our friend Fletch on. I think Fletch would be another good shout. We always love oh, speaking to Fletch. I'd like to get some local people on as well, because there's some really cool people locally. I'd like to get some people on involved with being the Keltman. Um uh, yeah, there's a bunch of people that I'd like to get on. Um, <laughs> some of the maybe some of the fighters who have been up doing um, seminars at Goliath uh, would be cool. Liam Harrison, if he's doing that seminar, would be cool to have on. Um, yep, uh, savage of a man. Um, bye. It's a uh, fuck it, man. Let's just have fun, uh, like we said in the beginning. As long as it's fun, we'll keep doing it. Uh, 100%. I mean, like I say, we're now heading on to including all the side episodes and special episodes. I think we've done about 75 recordings in total now. Just and remember, right. we said at the start, we we're like, see if we get six episodes, that'll be cool as anything. Yeah, there's so, so many like local people, like some of the Olympians, like um, like early, early child and stuff, would be cool to speak to. Mm-hmm. Local girl at the same school that I went to. Um, yeah. Laura Muir as well would be cool. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so, hi. Um, cool. Right. Well, I, I want to go watch some TV. It was very rare. I guess. Just, I think I should. Yeah, chance to watch TV. It's a, that's a cider coming in now. Um, I'm going to go watch some some uh, TV. And oh, there's actually a new program out. Um, what's the guy's name now? Nimsday, Nimsdale, Nimsday. Guy that oh, was, uh, uh, 14 Mountains or something. Four, uh, no, it's it nothing impossible. Is it 14 Peaks? Impossible. What is, 14 is it 14 Peaks High. Man, that looks amazing. That guy's up. He, uh, he, know, that is a podcast guest. Um, oh, I, I try it. I, I messaged him, but again, he blew up kind of crazy. I've got his book. I got his book last Christmas. Um, yeah. That's not the title. I got it last Christmas as a present. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, he is absolutely an incredible, incredible individual. Eh? Yeah, that'd be incredible cool, individual. I don't think we're going to get him now, but um, then I'm going to. Nah, make it would be a cool. Make go watch that tonight. So, um, yeah, well, well, thank you. for anyone that has listened. Enjoy listening to the silly goose gang drinking episode of the podcast. <laughs> and uh, thanks very much, and keep your ears out for all the great podcasts coming next year. Goodbye. Thanks. Silly Goose Gang Podcast.